I think my generation, because I think first generation, my first generation, I think when we first, when we grew up in, in England, I don't think it was kind of acknowledged to be something, to be a part of it. And I felt that for, for me, having a saxophone, I was being able to be kind of expressive and creative. And I think that's kind of plays a part into my psyche, even up to today, it's still a part of it. Back in those times, we lived in a big old Victorian house, Finsby Park, Lancaster Road. About 10 families from the Caribbean, my dad collected white label 45. Originally, he started off with American music and antique records, Otis Redding, stuff like that. Then reggae pop, he was a collector, more of a kind of a DJ. My parents came over around about the 54. Mum and dad met me in the early, early 60s. I was born, me, my brother, sister, it was like Windrush. Work brought him over. Dad said they were invited to work. There was not much work in the Caribbean. Family was a farming ship family. My mother's granddad was a Pentecostal church preacher in King's Cross. They had a church in the house of Zion, Angel Road, Market 73. Bus goes around the corner. He was the first to be on the BBC all the time. For me, funny enough, it started with Skiffle Eddie. Cochran, later got in to very much into the Beatles. She loves you, yeah, love me do. Michelle Norwegian Woods. I remember going to school and seeing a saxophone. But I, but I didn't start on the saxophone at all. Remember looking at it when I was 11 or 12. We all moved to South Tottenham. I saw the saxophone in the music room. Miss Strickland. I was really frightened of her. It was really funny because she was from South Africa. I'm not politically aware that she was really strict towards black children. She was on our case all of the time. I was bored, but she ran the music department. I saw the saxophone, but I never approached her. I was more into the sound system. I never got into the saxophone until I was later. I then went to Tottenham Court Road. There was a big shop called Bill Livington. I heard Grover and Washington Jazz Fusion. I never got into Charlie Parker until growing up. Growing up, I was into reggae. Then I went to Jazz Fusion. I heard of Charlie Parker and that changed everything. I was taught by a big time musician called Aubrey Frank at Trinity Music College. I used to go there. It was a sound for me. It was more like a human voice. For me, it was very spiritual. I used to get encompassed by it all then. We went to the city lit. I used to practice with big bands, take the A train. I then went to Goldsmiths. My first jazz band was the Jazz Fusion. We played at Ronnie Scott's. We played at the BBC and spent time in France. I gave up work and took up basking. I tried to make a living, but it's hard. Then I had a family. I found another side of myself. My generation, first generation, kind of got overlooked. Who I am, actually am. Having a saxophone to be creative. Mine was the first generation we got overlooked, not acknowledged, to be when we grew up in England. For me, having a saxophone and being ex expressive and creative to be a part of it. It plays in my psyche. Even improvisation brings another voice. You have a conversation when you are locked in, developing your own story and, talk and taking it somewhere. It's like a Nigerian Nagoric music, have messages, an internal conversation and connecting on a totally different level. For me, it's about being acknowledged having another voice. I can do this, I'm just saying. I have another language. You might understand it, or you might not. For me, jazz is American music. We did not invent that music. I'm born, from, I'm born here. For me, I try to mix it up. I listen to a lot of Bartok, Satie, Debussy. 
I try to absorb elements. People might say, what is he trying to say? What the hell is he playing? There is a connection between Coltrane and JMW Turner. Coltrane had a journey. Coltrane went to Hiroshima. He did all of all this music. He was trying to get a feeling about what went on. What was he what was he Turner trying to show us? What was Turner trying to do? We had something tragic happen last year. A moment at Grenfell. There is more to say. There is more to express. More to more to say. More to express. This is what I think. This is what I think. I think my generation, because I think first generation, my first generation, I think when we first, when we grew up in, in England, I don't think it was kind of acknowledged to be something, to be a part of it. And I felt that for me, having a sex plan, I was being able there to be kind of expressive and creative. And I think that's kind of plays a part into my psyche, even up to today, it's still a part of it. And I think in the improvisation, I think what happened with the chat is I think I was going to try because I could improvise, because improvisation brings you another voice. And you know, have a conversation. This is what I think. When they're locked in, when they, in, well, from my, my, my point of view, when the improvisation is um, developing your own story. It's taking the elements of a, of a song or a melody and making it a subject and having a conversation and taking it somewhere and bringing it back. But for me, for most of me, it's about a an internal conversation, which you can't express. It's almost like, I don't know, sometimes I, sometimes I used to think of like Nigerian, Gori, and the Gori, and these kind of tribal of music, like when they have to have, when the drugs have messages, that's what I think the improvisation is. It's having another voice and connecting on a, on a totally different level. For me, it, it's, it's being acknowledged that you are creative and you can do stuff and you can make music out of anything, really. And I think, yeah, it could be a shield and it could be a, it could be a defense mechanism. It could be anything, really. But for me, I think it was just something to say, look, here I, am, I can do this. And I can speak another language, but something like you might understand it and you might not understand it. So yeah, it's, it's kind of my, my language and to take. And I've tried to um, mix, because for me, growing up in England, it's pretty, quite a little bit different. But I, when I look at because jazz, for me, jazz is American music. And I'm born here. And I look at it and I say, well, it's not really our balloon. We didn't invent that music. So for me, I tried to mix it up. It, I think part of the reggae bit, with my dad, and kind of some of the stuff I used to hear as a child, like pop stuff, comes through. And I used to listen to a lot of um, Bark, Bark, um, I'm probably mad about Bark, Bark, Stravinsky, Stravinsky, right? Because I'm more like, more like the um, syncopated, syncopated music. Yeah, because I, I listened to, used to listen to that a lot. I think, I think we said Eric Sarty, Debussy, that comes part of the music. I've absorbed that as well into music. So I, I try to, when I improvise, I try to think of those elements as well. But sometimes other people don't get what I'm trying to say because they might, well, what, what the hell is he playing? But I think it's with part of my psyche, what I've got. I think Zach, I've got a group of Debussy, Sarty, Sarty, and some Coltrane. Coltrane did a thing. I think there's a connection with Return and Coltrane, because Coltrane had a journey. Coltrane went to, you know, when they dropped the um, Bob and Hirik, was it? Coltrane went there to, to do this music. When they dropped the bomb, and then Coltrane was trying to get the feeling what actually happened, he's trying to express it. And then when I came here, I know it's totally, totally different. When I look at Turner, and I kind of think, what was trying to Turner trying to get? When you show the love, what was he? What was he? What is he trying to show us? And I, that's the thing I get. And I, I think for me, 
yeah, but I was trying to do music, so I was almost element culture, even some of Miles Davis, uh, Blue and Green. Mm-hmm. All my sorts kind of mixed that up. But we had something tragic happen last year. You know what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna say. But the building was sort of mm-hmm. light. To me, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, I often think about that. Benfield, I think, I think people are talking about doing something like that. But yeah, at the moment, that's what I think. I, I think if, if that little boy looks now, I think about it, so well, he's, you know, he's done all right, but there's more he can actually do. There's more out there. It's more to express in the, mu- the music, trying to find... Because I'm always trying to experiment. The reason why I really enjoy it is that because it's, it's experimental and you can throw things in there and go, oh, what does that sound like?